Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope this video finds you well. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And in today's episode, I'm gonna be giving you my thoughts once more, because I actually did an interview with the creative director, but I'm gonna be giving you my comprehensive thoughts on a fragrance by the brand Milano Fragranze. This one is called Navillo, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my review of Navillo by Milano Fragranze, and I tell you all about this fragrance, what I get from the smell, the performance, the longevity, all that good stuff, I do wanna mention that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, if you like reviews and top 10 videos, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. It would mean so much to me, and of course, if you can give this video a thumbs up, for the YouTube algorithm, that means a lot to me as well. So the creative director for this brand is Alessandro Brun. This fragrance and every fragrance from this brand was launched this year in 2021. He also happens to be the creative director behind the brand Mask Milano. There are so many wonderful fragrances from that brand, including Mandala, Latessa, Kintsugi, and many more. Here I have Navillo. Now Navillo, all of these fragrances obviously are inspired by Milan. The name of the city is also in the name of the brand. And from what he told me, this fragrance is inspired by the blue collar workers in Milan who wash their clothes in the canal. And so this fragrance is a little aquatic, it's citrusy, it's also a little soapy as well. As a matter of fact, when you look on the back of the box, it says Marseille Soap Bar Accord. So it's actually included in the note breakdown. So if you're looking for something very fresh, citrusy, soapy, and super appropriate for an office setting, I think you should keep watching. So let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. So like I said earlier, this fragrance is really soapy. As a matter of fact, for a second, I thought there might have been a little bit of iris or tuberose or some kind of clean white floral in the heart that kind of contributes to that soapy accord. However, there isn't such a floral listed. There's no iris, there's no mention of tuberose either, but you definitely have this clean, smooth, and slightly starchy, almost like you're smelling a rice accord. There's this starchy, soapy accord. Now, secondary to that is actually the citrus. Now, what kind of citrus? So there's pettigrain. Now, pettigrain is very closely related to neroli. Neroli, you're gonna get purely the citrus. Pettigrain is gonna give you some woodsy accents. So it comes across smelling a little citrusy, a little woodsy. The fragrance that it smells the most like is a fragrance by bond number nine called Eau de New York, but this one is in a league of its own. It smells completely different. This one has that soapy accord. The bond number nine does not. However, if you are a fan of those types of fragrances, if you like Neroli Portofino, if you like 4711, if you like those bright effervescent types of fragrances, I think you should definitely check this out, especially if you're looking for something that smells fresh out of the shower, very clean, something with that soapy accord. Now, the cool thing about this brand is they list all of the notes on the back of the box, and the fact that they put essential oil, or EO, which stands for essential oil, next to most of the ingredients, tells me that there are a lot of natural ingredients used in this perfume. So just in the opening, you have these, uh, the Marseille Soap Bar Accord that I mentioned earlier. You have Calabrian Bergamot Essential Oil, Neroli Essential Oil. So like I said, you are gonna get a little bit of that Neroli Pettigrain vibe. However, I do think that the Pettigrain might be a little bit stronger. In the hearts, you have Lavandin Essential Oil, Pettigrain Essential Oil, and Vetiver Haiti essential oil, so Haitian vetiver. And then in the base, you have cedarwood essential oil, white musks, which, which of course are synthetic, and you have aquatic notes. Now, this fragrance does not smell salty. It doesn't have too much of this ozonic accord, but it does convey a sense of cleanliness and a sense of purity. And I think it's that purity that kind of adds to the aquatic tendencies. Oftentimes you think of the water, especially if you are thinking of crystal clear 
blue waters, you're thinking of purity. And of course, the blue here was not inspired by the sea or anything like that. It's inspired by the old school apothecary style bottle. So I think that even drawing inspiration from something like that is really awesome. But you are going to get those woodsy nuances. You get that soapy accord, just a slight touch of lavender. And then you have the clean musks in the base. I don't get a whole lot of cedar wood from this fragrance. Cedar wood can come across smelling a little peppery. I don't necessarily get that here, but this is the easiest to wear, in my opinion, fragrance from the brand. Now there's also La Prima, which conveys a little bit of sweetness with it. Brera is a little bit heavier. Uh, you do have some exotic smelling notes in there. La Prima kind of conveys this touch of sweetness, which I think also makes it a very accessible formula. But in terms of something very bright, fresh, compliment worthy, straight out of the shower vibe, very easy to pull off, citrusy and, and soapy, I would definitely recommend that you check out Navillo. You may find this fragrance at Perfumology, so I'm gonna leave all of the information down below if you are interested in learning more about the brand. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, this is certainly a unique fragrance. I know I mentioned Eau de New York, 4711, Roli Portofino, but at the end of the day, this has that soapy accord. It has a touch of the lavender. It also has this really nice balance of the soapy accord and the Pettigrain and Neroli that it kind of adds this bright and refreshing aura to the fragrance that I don't necessarily find in too many other fragrances. Now I know citrus notes are ubiquitous, but it's really the combination of the citrus and that soapy accord that I think really makes this fragrance stand out. The overall smell is very pleasant and I actually really like that starchy quality from the soap accord. In terms of the longevity, you can expect about six to eight hours on your skin, so it performs really well. The projection was great for the first hour and a half of application. Maybe for the first half hour, it actually radiated beyond an arm's length, but it didn't start to sit closer to the skin until about that five and a half to six hour mark. So the performance is pretty good given the concentration. Of course, the versatility is also excellent, completely unisex. I think as long as you're wearing it indoors, you can wear it all year round. It makes for a great office scent. In terms of a lot of the notes listed in the note breakdown, I can see somebody really enjoying this one in the spring and summer. And I think somebody who's a little bit older, as well as somebody who's a little bit younger, can pull this fragrance off. And it does give off a bit of a casual vibe. If you're looking for something that can be worn in a formal scenario, I would definitely recommend Brera or La Prima. Of course, if you would like me to review any other fragrance from this brand, I'm always taking recommendations. And in terms of the presentation, from having the name of the brand engraved into the cap, the apothecary style bottle, the 1920 sort of art deco feel to the presentation, the gold hardware, the apothecary style bottles, everything is really cool. So I love the presentation for this one. The magnetic cap, I should mention that. My final verdict on this fragrance is, if you're looking for a soapy and citrusy fragrance, that is long lasting, can be worn all year round as long as you're wearing it indoors, will work great in an office setting, but you're looking for something that has a little bit more pizzazz than like a 4711 or Neroli Portofino, please check this one out. I think it's an amazing fragrance by Milano Fragranze. Of course, Naviglio is one of my favorites from the brand. I will be reviewing another one in the near future, hopefully. But uh, those have been my thoughts on Naviglio by Milano Fragranze. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, if I remember, I'm going to leave a card up here to the interview that I did with Alessandro Brun, who is a creative director of the brand. You can hear it from the horse's mouth. And this way you can learn a little bit more about the brand, the inspiration, and you can see the creative director's passion behind the creation of these fragrances. So thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe if you took something of value. Please give this video a thumbs up. It would mean so much to me. Love you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye.